today on Divorce Court. I'm here at Divorce Court today because Bobby's a cheater, he's bad with money, and he has a bad attitude. Christina cheated early on in the relationship and it destroyed us. I know how to save money, Bobby knows how to spend money. I'm not really sure where all the money goes. I feel like I don't get to spend money the same way she gets to spend money. It makes me feel angry and less fortunate than her. Bobby, I need you to step up and be a husband and act more mature and treat me better. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Christina Davis and Bobby Dunbar. The two of you have been together for six years, married for four years. Uh, Mr. Dunbar has been busy. Uh, he's got uh, one child with you, five all, six all together, so five with other women. Yes. Stair step. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Busy boy. And Ms. Davis, you have four children total. Why don't you tell me why you're here today? I'm here to save my marriage. Okay. Um, Bobby and I have been having a lot of problems. We argue all the time. Things are very chaotic at home, and we just can't agree on anything. What's the biggest problem you have? I understand that he has a history of cheating. Yes. Is that true? Is that true? Yes. The history was before you were married and after you were married? Yes. Okay. Do you believe the cheating has stopped? I believe so. Mr. Dunbar, have you... Have you confessed to all the cheating that you've done? Yes, ma'am. You've told her about everything? Yes, ma'am. And how long has it been since you last cheated on her? Uh, 2014. So we're talking three years, four years. Oh, Lord, can't count. <laughs> four years. Okay. Now that the cheating has stopped, what is standing in the way between you guys and happiness? We can't let it go. We argue about how we've hurt each other in the past right. with the cheating back and forth. It's the same argument over and over. So back and forth, that means you cheated as well? Yes. Okay. How often did she cheat and how did you find out about it? She's uh, cheated, I'm gonna go with four times that I know of. Okay. No. Three, three was sexual, one was an emotional. Okay. Uh, Ms. Davis, you, you, don't, you don't agree? No. How many you say? One. One time? Or is it one guy multiple times? One guy. Multiple times. Okay, no, I got No, not multiple times. Not just one guy one just time? one guy. Why don't you tell me how you've caught him cheating? A few months after we got together, there was a woman that started sending me messages asking me if I was still with him, telling me that he was telling her that he loved her, and she sent me proof of the messages, and, um... You know, then he cut off contact with her, so I kind of let it go, and we moved on. And then right after we got married, there was a family member's I found out that he had been sleeping with this woman. And he told me it was like a one-night stand, and other friends and family told me it was more like an ongoing relationship. Wow. And we ended up staying with that family for a little while. And while I was staying there, she showed me text messages that were going on between the two of them. And she asked me not to say anything. So she wanted you to keep quiet about the messages? Yes. But were they still in the middle of texting each other? Yes. So it was ongoing right in front of you? Yes. I would check his phone and there would be no messages there. So he was deleting his yeah. end. Mr. Dunbar, did that happen? Um. For starters, no, yes, no. Um, the text messaging, yes, the affair, though, happened before the marriage. It wasn't so much as I love you text. It mm -hmm. was... <clears throat> it was my wife's driving me crazy text. Uh-huh, so, uh -huh. The other woman is typically not a good person to go to no. for counsel with respect to marriage issues, right. just like on the, on the, on the general, general principle. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> when did you catch her cheating and how? That time I knew because she had told me and we had to do paternity on our children, on our child, mm -hmm. because of that. She affair. wasn't sure. Right. And the second time, she had started by telling me he wanted her to babysit his kids for him. Mm -hmm. um, and then it went to overnights. And she had told me that there was a secret and basically she had told me she was sleeping with this person. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the third time, she was having an, I call it an emotional affair, mm -hmm. um, which um, she was texting another man, a coworker. Gotcha, gotcha. How did the paternity test turn out? It, it was no, yours? It was, it was, okay, cool. We're gonna move forward here. Okay. I wanna talk about once you got married, if and how things changed. And I also want to talk about your financial situation because, Ms. Davis, you say he is financially irresponsible. Movies, food, speakers, random stuff before you pay the bills. Yeah, but she buys coloring books and grands and stuff we don't need for the house as well. Yeah, coloring books, speakers, you know. You say he's financially irresponsible. Yes. Why, why don't you explain what that means? Well, between the two of us, we make more than enough money mm -hmm. to pay our bills and everything, but it seems like there's never money. You know, Where money, does the money go? I don't know. I don't know fully. Um, Do you, I, are you the one who actually pays the bills? I mean, are you the one that actually submits them? I try to, but Bobby, tells me that I'm controlling mm -hmm. and he won't give me his check. And it's not that I want to keep his check. I just think it would be easier if one person manages all the bills because right. then we things don't have don't very good communication. Yeah. So. She claims she doesn't know where your money goes and, and you're, you're barely scraping by even though you're making a good salary. I'm not going to say I don't have a money problem, mm -hmm. but what I am going to say is we both have a problem. Um, the reason for that is, is if she wasn't busy spending her money on her job, then we would have the money. Somehow. Busy spending her money on her job. She, what does that mean? She buys things for her place of employment, and they're supposed to reimburse, and they don't. Okay. I've spent a total of, like, $50 in Are a year. Are you a teacher? Yes. So I buy things here and there for my She's classroom. She's an infant teacher. She bought a crib that the job they should have provided. Okay, that's for one crib. $30. You've got, been together for years. Uh, you don't work, right? You're, you're, you're checking. Working now. I'm you're working I'm, now. I'm, you were on SSI. I'm, yes. Mm -hmm. But you bought one, that's yet. one crib. Do, right, right. Do, do you buy things like movies, food, speakers, random stuff before you pay the bills? Yeah, but she buys coloring books and grands and stuff we don't need for the house as well. Yeah, coloring books, speakers, <laughs> you know, is her spending as lavish as yours? No, Be I would honest. have to say I'm worse, right. but she does, she does have her, her little nicks and crannies, which I call them. Yeah, everybody does, but, but, but here's the thing. I know you people are here to get some help, mm -hmm. and the one thing I know for sure is you will never ever get off a dead stop stuck until you own your other stuff without pointing at the other person's stuff. You, you know, you said, you know, I'm bad with money. But she's bad with money, too. You, you can't just say, yeah, I'm bad with money, because you got to correct that. You can't continue to be bad with money because she's also bad with money, even though you're worse. You see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. You have to own your stuff or you'll never, you'll never get it unpacked. Ms. Davis, you say that Mr. Dunbar has terrible temper tantrums, and I want to talk about that next. He's broken things in our house. It's mainly the doors. Mainly the doors. <laughs> now, Mr. Dunbar, do you sign on for having done those things? Should one person in a marriage be responsible for managing the money in the bills? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Tell me about Mr. Dunbar's temper tantrums. He goes into a rage. Um, if I say anything that he doesn't agree with, we fight all the time about petty things. Give me an and, example, something really small y'all went to town over. Um, usually it has something to do with the kids. Like, we argue about whether or not the kids can shower in the morning. I mean, you know, and like, we, I'll, we'll be driving down the road and his anger is so bad that if I say something that upsets him, he'll slam on the brakes and I'm worried we're gonna get into a wreck. He's thrown my ring out the window and it got lost. Um, Do you have any example? I see you have a folder there. You got something you wanna show me? Yeah, I have pictures. Uh-huh. Um, 
he's broke he's broken things in our house. Okay. It's mainly the doors, like the door panels. Uh huh. Mainly the, the doors. Yeah, the screen doors don't shut. Now, Miss. Okay, turn around and look. Now, Mr. Dunbar, do you sign on for having done those things? The one on the left, yes. The one right here, no. The one here, no. The one there, no. Those were already, the two window ones were already, already there. Already there. You just did the one in the middle. The one the one on the left, I did do, and I yeah. got a real good. Do, do, do you agree you got a temper a temper problem? I do agree. Because I, I can, I, 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 I can see, I can bring, right here, <laughs> even talking, you can get right there. Right here. But you want to fix this thing, though, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does she have a temper as well? Um, no, she just has a way of shutting down. Like, well, she gets mad, she leaves. She goes upstairs. You don't see her. Have you oh. always had a bad temper? Or is this something that has arisen it's, out of the function of, of, of what's going on in the household? Your Honor, it's getting, it's, it's, it's gotten to where it's at now because, like, I feel like I'm, I'm alone in the house. I feel like I'm taking care of all the kids. She's not there. She's not backing me up. So, yes, it, it gets overworked. I get overwhelmed. Well, where is she? She, she's either working or she's upstairs sleeping. <laughs> so that's kind of where that goes. If, are you just working and sleeping? No. <laughs> if I'm upstairs, it's usually because I leave the area because he's yelling and screaming or throwing things, and it stresses me out, so I leave the situation because I don't want to fight in front of the kids. And the only way to stop the argument is if I leave the room. How does that sound? Go ahead. So all that relates to because... It starts because I correct our kids and she doesn't agree the way I correct them or she doesn't back me up. Are you cool with your correction or are you are, are, are you running and charging? Are you cool? At first, I'm cool. I am cool at first. Till she comes down and gives me a bunch of problems about either the punishment or that I'm either being unfair. So she basically over jumps me and then it, Sets me off. Do, do, do you disagree with how he parents? I do. Um, what what he, do you think he's doing wrong? He's usually just way too hard on the kids, and he parents by yelling and screaming. And You're yelling and screaming at him? Our kids, not, not to mention names, but our kids took off with our car three weeks ago. I have to be strict with these kids. They need supervision. They need guidance. And I, I'm sorry to say it. I love my wife. But she's not guiding them. She's not parenting them. She's not, she's not thinking of the reasons why I'm so strict with them. I mean, There's let's be a little be honest. When I met her, her kids screaming. were... They were oh, racing. so we, you're, you're parenting kids that, that you weren't on board with from the yeah, beginning. They're yes, stepchildren yes, that are brought into the household. Yes, her, the kids tell me to shut up, and I'm mm. stupid, and she's and, okay And you with think that. that she's undermining you. You're trying to bring some order into the home, and yes, she believes that you're... You believe she's undermining you? Yes, ma'am. He doesn't hit him, does he? No, but like but I feel are like... you loud and poppy? <laughs> I'm loud, and I am—I have to be. I feel like I have to be. I'm the, i feel like I'm the only parent there. So when you have four kids and you get overwhelmed, there's only so much I can do. I think you're wrong about that. Uh, I think it's a matter of not knowing how. That's you right. know what I mean. It's—it's a, it's a matter of not knowing how, and I think that. You're 10 years younger than she is, correct? Yes, ma'am. I think that a lot of what's happening here is two people who don't know how to get out of, out of, out of an ugly spot. And I'm going to do the best I can to get you started in the right direction. How should discipline be managed in a blended family? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I don't want you interrupt, to interrupt me because I got a lot to say, very little time in which to say it. And I don't want you to dig into a detail when I'm talking broad stroke pictures, okay? Number one, we're going to start with the children. You, um, 
You guys have got to get this on the same page with that. And the way you get on the same page is not dealing with the circumstance when the circumstances happen. You should have a conversation between now and home about what the rules are. Get a piece of paper out so everybody's clear. Hey, Johnny should do A, Bobby should do B. They should be in, in bed by C and by D. If that doesn't happen, number one, we gonna take the Game Boy. Number two, we gonna take the doc. Sit down and figure out what the rules are so everybody's just not working from dead stop. I'm upset. That's number one. Number two, you have got to get calm. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what I mean? When in any aggravating situation, the first fight you have is always with yourself. And you got to remember, your kids will be as loud and poppy as you are. It's not the rage and the fear that makes them behave, but it's consistency, it's, it's respect, it's certainty. That's what makes them behave. So what you have to do is be consistent and be certain, hide them keys. I don't know, you know, <laughs> you know, do all of that, but be consistent and be certain. Kids want a certain level of discipline, they, but they want to know that the same thing is going to happen on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Another reason probably why they're misbehaving, they may be misbehaving before you got in the picture. If you've got a chaotic home, they're in chaos all the time. And if they're in chaos all the time, they act out. They just act out. So what you guys have to do, since you're the one with the anger problem, you have to make a decision every day that you're not going to get angry. Yes, you know what I mean? And there, there's a whole lot of different ways to do that, and I've, and I've talked about it before, and, and I'm going to have you go see someone to help you. But every morning, you should say out loud to yourself, today, just for today, I'm not going to get angry. I'm, if she does A, B, C, or D, I'm not going to get angry. And if I do, I'm going to go outside and walk around the block. Yes, ma'am. Before you do anything else. I think you love her. I do. I think you don't want to be much. that angry dude. And, and you've got to remember the fight is not you and the kids, not you and her, it's you and you. That's where the fight is. Encourage his change of state of mind. You know, stay in it with him. Don't just split, say, hey, let's, let's deal with this first fight. Let's calm this down. Let's pull, I'm right here, babe. I'm not going anywhere. Back him up. When there's punishment out there, back him up. He's quite... And then applaud what he does. If he comes, you know, if he comes... If he usually comes 100 and he comes in at 50, you got to applaud the 50. You know what I'm saying? Because that encourages that behavior. And you have got to let go of the past. There's no way to even that score. She loves you, she stayed. He loves you, she, he stayed. That's over with. You're two new people with a clean slate. Don't ever bring up what happened some years ago. It's all over with now. It's all over with now. Go to a marriage counselor. Those people are good. They can, they, they can tell you what, they can look at what you're doing and tell you a different way to get it done so you know how to do it. But in broad strokes, that's what I'm telling you to do. And I know you're, you're tired of it. Sick and tired of it. And what I'm telling you is, whew, let that go for that six month of effort that you're gonna give to make this thing work. You know what I mean? You got a right to be cranky and tired of it. Got a right, but it ain't gonna do you no good. S so don't entertain it. I like you both. Good luck to the both of you. This matter's adjourned. So you spoke a lot about your anger today. <laughs> what will you do to kind of work on that? I think I'm gonna do what she says. Yeah. Get up in the morning and tell myself I'm not gonna get angry. Mm -hmm. And if that means walking away and going upstairs, that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, what are some of the things that you're willing to do to make sure Bobby doesn't go off the deep end? I think I need to give him more support and encouragement.